What's up, you guys? What's up, you guys? It's Russell here. So today, I wanted to hop on and talk about the different thresholds of entry into different types of jobs. Um, each job that you might choose to have has a different threshold of entry, right? Um, so a construction worker, you might have to have the knowledge um, behind whatever job you're doing, whether framing or paving or whatever it is. Um, a doctor, obviously, you need to go to medical school. Um, to be on YouTube, you got to put in a bunch of time on learning about YouTube, how to edit on YouTube. And then not only that, um, <laughs> you got to be able to commit years to, to do well on it. Um, same with any job, right? They all have a threshold of entry, something that you have to break through in order to enter into that work area. I wanted to share with you guys why I haven't finished college and what um, that reasoning is. Um, I found early on that, not early on, so I have found out that these different thresholds of entry um, are kind of what you have to decide that you want to do. It's not so much you want to be a doctor or you want to be a lawyer or you want to be a YouTuber or you want to be a contractor. Um, you have to decide what work you want to put in to become who that is so that you can become one of them. Um, in my personal life, um, just rewinding back to when I first decided what type of career I wanted to do. Um, I first wanted to be a hospital administrator. Uh, I didn't know what that took. I just knew I liked medicine and I liked business. And I was like, okay, well, mix them both. And what do you get? Hospital administrator. <laughs> then come to find out um, there's a lot of schooling involved. You have to go four years for your bachelor's and then another at least two to three years um, in a master's program to become a hospital administrator. And then once you're done with that, the pay is good and can be great in certain locations, but um, it's nothing fantastic or phenomenal. Um, and so I chose to leave that path and go get a job. So then... Um, when I got that job, I worked with that company for two years and I found out pretty quickly that working for somebody else sucked. Um, I didn't have to work nine to five. That was nice. I, I knew I didn't want to work nine to five. Um, I either worked early in the morning, so I had all afternoon to do other stuff or late at night, so I had all, all day to do other stuff. Um, but I did not enjoy working for somebody else. Um, and knowing all the money that they were profiting off, profiting off of my hard work that I was putting in. When you're working for somebody else, I've found that it's super hard. Um, you, you break through a threshold, but it's hard to break through the ceiling, right? You can break through that threshold and make really good money working a job for somebody else. Um, but you can't just like break through the ceiling and just kill it. Um, in a lot of these jobs where you work for somebody else. There's some out there where you can, if, if a company you're working for goes public or something and you have uh, shares of that company, obviously that helps a ton and, and you can make a ton of money doing that. Um, but I, I have found that there's kind of, you, you break through the threshold and then there's a point where you kind of stop getting increases, right? You might get pay increases for the first five or 10 years, and then it just stops. Um, or it's very, very minute increases in your pay. Um, and that's a huge disadvantage, I would say, to working for somebody else. Not only the fact that you're working your tail off and only getting paid a portion of all that work that you're putting in, but you're also working your tail off just to sustain the job, not even to go anywhere with the job per se. Once you've already broken through that threshold, um, you might be stuck in that position where you're in or 
or in that spot where you're at um, for a long time in, until you switch jobs or you switch to another employer and then it's the same story over again. Um, and, and it's hard to reach that next level on the ladder sometimes um, when you're working for somebody else. So I went back to school again to be a dentist. And this time I was like, I got this. I'm going to be a dentist. And I know that threshold. I was like, I know it. <laughs> and so I jump in and I start taking all the classes, the prereqs to go to dental school. And then what did I find out? <laughs> that not only is there a threshold of schooling, but there's a threshold of debt. <laughs> and um, I was looking at, I already have a family at this point in my life when I went back to school to do, to be a dentist. Um, and so I figured out that I was looking up for $400,000 just to become a dentist, um, all for in the state where I live currently in Utah, um, all just to make $120,000 out of school, maybe, um, which seemed a little crazy to me, honestly. Um, and there were other things that, um, I just ended up not loving about it. Um, I still love dentistry, love that field of labor. I'm still very passionate about it, but um, just I wasn't willing to meet that threshold, um, not only of the schooling, but of the debt mainly, the the financial part of that threshold of entry. Because I found tuitions have just skyrocketed, not only for everybody, I mean, not only for dentists, but for everybody. Um, for example, like some statistics that I've read, dental tuition, dental school tuition has risen. I honestly, I can't remember the exact numbers, but dental school tuition has risen almost how much? So dental school tuition has more than doubled, almost tripled in cost. And the pay or the salary of a dentist hasn't gone up just as much. It's gone up maybe 50%. And this is over like the last 20 years. So over the last 20 years, dental school tuition has doubled or tripled in cost, but the pay of a dentist has only gone up by like 50%, um, not even doubling. And this is a huge disadvantage. You're already going into so much debt to become a dentist and become a specialized individual in that realm of care. Um, but you aren't going to get paid for that. It was super intriguing to be my own boss and to like take control of, um, my own future, my own destiny. Um, but that didn't work out. What I decided to do next was I decided, I decided to start my own company. Um, with this, I had the benefit of setting my own schedule just like a dentist would essentially. Um, I also had the benefit to kind of make however much I wanted to make. Um, the more work I put in, the more money I was gonna make. That was a big deal for me in order to be able to make more money for the more time or more effort that I put into the company. So I really liked that aspect of it. But there's a huge threshold of owning your own company. And as far as owning my own company, it, um, it's difficult. There's a lot of work. You have to do everything. It's all on your shoulders to, to make money to support yourself and your family. Um, there's no guarantee of a paycheck and there's no guarantee um, retirement or health insurance <laughs> or any of that stuff. Um, but that's, that's the trade-off that you have. Also, the huge benefit of owning the specific company that I own of taking care of a individual disabilities was that I get instant income. It's just automatically there. Um, I am already taking care of someone with disabilities, and so the income's already there. Um, I don't have to have debt to start this company. Uh, it didn't take debt to start it, um, and I'm able to reinvest my funds and expand and grow and um, go forward from there. A huge point I wanted to touch on with this video was that companies, large companies, are realizing that 
the threshold isn't a bachelor's degree anymore or a master's degree anymore. Um, we have three huge companies that everybody knows that's going this direction and they're IBM, Apple, and Google. Um, all three of these companies don't require a college degree anymore. And um, that's a huge benefit. And I think it's also a huge step in the right direction for them realizing where the value truly is in the individual. Um, and it's who that individual is and not so much um, what they've proven over a four-year span or, <clears throat> or whatever. Obviously, there are certain jobs that require that barrier of entry, right? Um, a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer or even other certain positions, right? Um, uh, a, um, anyway, I was thinking of a like design person or something like you have to have your your like book that you've like proven that you know how to design um, and you don't want a doctor who hasn't studied medicine working on you right um, and even I mean even as far as real estate right um, so many people think real estate agents are just like oh they jump in and they start doing it right <laughs> it takes years to become a good real estate agent and really know what you're doing and I'm talking from personal experience I'm a real estate agent and I still know that I don't know everything. Um, I'm working to know everything. I can always look up the answer, ask somebody for the answer, and find the answer always. But um, to become that agent who is the equivalent of like a doctorate degree, there's no way you can do that in a year. Um, it, there's a barrier of entry, right? You have to have a few years of experience, closing deals, going, doing your classes and um, doing extra study on real estate and really getting to know your markets where you are um, and it takes it takes a huge effort right a huge barrier of entry for a real estate agent likewise in any in any job or industry there's that barrier of entry and you have to find that barrier of entry and then break through it right even IBM Apple and Google they have barriers of entry right it's not a degree anymore which is wonderful in my opinion, um, but they still have a barrier of entry and they'll determine what that barrier of entry is in their interviewing process, right? And as long as you can meet their stipulations and fit inside their circle of what they want, um, then you have a huge benefit in um, interviewing with that person, right? So in the end, um, the biggest thing is that you have to find what threshold you want to break through. Once you identify that threshold, you have to set goals, um, small goals, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, even yearly goals um, to break through that threshold. Um, and I challenge you guys, and I think it's super valuable to set goals and to um, learn new things. And I think um, everybody should go and try to break through those barriers of entry that they want to get into and get started in. And it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, you can always break through new barriers um, anytime in your life, no matter how young or old you are. Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe below. Smash the like button. Don't forget the barrier of entry, smashing the like button.